This video was sponsored by Audible. Tier lists. They've gotten to be quite a big craze now, haven't they? Ironically, they first got their use in fighting game communities, and Smash Bros. was no exception. They would be lists that would determine how characters would stack up in one-on-one -on -one fights. But in Smash Bros, it, it was always this weird disassociation, this weird quirkiness where you would see a balloon Pokemon do better than the king of evil. Which gets you thinking, and it's something we've all entertained at some point. Let's say two of these fictional characters walked into the bar at the same time? How would they stack up in a fight? But very few have attempted to answer the ultimate question. Where does Luigi stack up against this army of gods and men. This is a tier list ranking all of Smash Ultimate 75 characters based on their power. It was hell. It's a very tricky topic. You have characters that perform slapstick feats where they just deadlift a galaxy, some that change sizes like they change underwear, and some pages where I was researching have Richter as multi-solar system level of power. Feats. They're a way to measure a character's abilities, strengths, weaknesses in a way that we can sort of measure across multiple canons so we have a general understanding of how strong they are. But there is no objectivity in the world that can save you from some of this. Does Mario withstand black holes at close range, thus making him a being with the strongest durability in all the universe? So there needs to be rules. Number one. Stop! This is for fun, and is by no means all-encompassing. This is me relying on my breadth of knowledge while also triple-checking wikis as well as discussion boards that have done this topic before, in an attempt to get this somewhat objective. Oh god, I forgot that Wii Fit Trainer actually had an SNES RPG that had one copy where she defeated a god, whoops. So I've tried, but the reality is there are so many franchises in Smash, many I haven't played, so the fact is I probably will be fallible somewhere. Number two. Smash Bros. is not canon. If they do it in Smash Bros., it is a reference to something else, or they made it so they can compete in Smash Bros. But you can't go from Smash Bros. to say that they can do it in their lore. Just, it doesn't work like that. Also, it gets dicey with what is canon and what isn't. I'm looking at you guys. Number three, we are not listing them one after the other. There's no way I'm going number 48 to number 47. Instead, we're just going to place characters into general tiers where they have to do better than the tier below them, but they can't do better than the tier above them. I think that's just going to make it more simple to cover more ground. This list will all be dictated by how they all face against a singular objective threat. And where do most fights occur? On the playground! So with the help of my lovely assistant, Mr. Cat, please bring in the tier board. So as we go through this, I'll name the name of each of these tiers and the feats, as it were, that you need to accomplish to get into said tier. Now, we're not going to be so nitty gritty about it, but this will be a good guideline. So the question on your mind is who? Who is the least powerful combatant? And it is the only character who combats ants. And this is the I with ants tier. Home to only one citizen, Olimar. Olimar is canonically shorter than the width of the first gen iPods. Plus, he's only useful with Pikmin. Imagine that being on your resume. Basically, his life is like this tweet. But the F tier of our playground is the kitties playing. So what are these kitties doing? Canonically, Rob is a toy, and a pretty dinky one at that. You can make your arguments about the subspace emissary, but I will not. The Animal Crossing characters, at best, have slingshots, and at worst, have lewd fan art. And obviously, Duck Hunt. I mean, if you want to include the Zapper, that's still only shooting clay pigeons, and not very well at that. So I had to reorganize here. This tier is sort of split into two categories. The, I have to be home by 6 p.m. because mom's calling me for dinner, and the let me speak to your manager. And one of the first characters we're including here is... Let's talk about this. First off, before we go into Joker, I gotta say this. I'm not gonna go into the same characters over and over. Zero Suit Samus is Samus. Dr. Mario is effectively Mario. 
to the same effect, Joker is Ren, I'm a Mia. Now I understand. All right, so Joker and the gang scuttled their way through the cognitive palaces. Let me, let me, let me say that again. Cognitive palaces. This is like the only place where they can do their battling. That's to say it's not real. The power they have in there is their willpower. That's great, they're strong, but outside of these palaces, I don't think Joker retains his physical strength or abilities. And when he does face a god, it's only when the god in control says, I'm gonna make the fake and the real the same thing! And then, and only then, we get to see his super powerful ability that only happens once, and at the end of the game, he can never go back in the metaverse except for the shuffle. So, he's here, all right? So unless we say that the playground was a cognitive playground and all of the fighters are in the cognitive world, then that'd be the only way Joker stands a chance. Instead, he's probably babysitting the kids or maxing out his confidant with Daisy. Daisy does not have many canonical anything. She started in Super Mario Land as the replacement for Peach, the princess of Sarasa Land, and then all of her canon kind of is left to the Mario sports games. And if you want to include that, then... It'll make sense later. Corona Plants isn't much to write home about. I mean, he can shoot fireballs at best and sit in pipes for the rest of his existence. And Wee Fit Trainer ends off our tier. I don't know how strong Wee Fit Trainer is. At best, she's probably a great human, has great health, and has the best fitness of any living creature. But being fit does not mean you can enter a battlefield. But things get spicy in our largest tier, E tier. Boom! The playground is transformed into a battlefield. The Street Fighter crew, Terry, Captain Falcon, Sheik, and the Star Fox characters, all of them are basically superhuman in strength, if not peak human. They've mastered specific techniques that took years to train, and all of them are extremely agile, speedy. Captain Falcon maybe is the only one we could argue here, because he doesn't really do much outside of a car except be agile F-Zero-G-X. But I'm not gonna overthink it. And then, uh, Little Mac. I mean, he beats people up, he's trained a long time, and you know he's from the Bronx, gotta represent. Ooh, ooh, you know, hey, hey, yeah, hey. Then there are creatures that master one or two key abilities or techniques. Fire Emblem classes, of course, go here. While some of them have amazing sword skills and can strike enemies in one blow, Usually these battles are when they're not alone. They're not taking out these armies single-handedly. Oh, and you think you get a sword that slays dragons? Suddenly you're a legendary warrior. You're tacky. In Pokemon, while you could argue all of them go to level 100 and they can one-shot some characters later, I see Pokemon as being used as weapons of war in a scenario like this. Where you have to remember, they're small and only have limited amounts of energy to do these attacks. And typically, they only have four moves at their disposal. Pokemon is a tough one though, but I'm not gonna say Incineroar can deadlift Ridley. Finally, some of the more quirky characters, characters where I don't really have a lot of material to go off of in terms of what they can do. It's usually characters that they surround themselves with happen to be strong, but they don't do something themselves, like Diddy Kong. DK, we'll get to that bastard, but Diddy doesn't do anything remarkable in most of the games, except maybe carry Donkey Kong while they're hovering, but like, that's the best I could come up with. And Bowser Jr. is a conundrum. Like, do you make him Shadow Mario? Do you put him in the clown car? You know what though, no matter what, Bowser Jr. is still a dumb, annoying, stupid, dumb, idiot child that drinks warm milk and falls asleep to Paw Patrol. I, uh, I may have some bias. Banjo-Kazooie are arguable to be higher, but they don't really display much other than cartoony hijinks. At best you could say golden feathers make them invincible, or that they survive deep falls from high heights. But they don't really do all too much except fire eggs, and I'm only really putting them in this tier because they have a variety of abilities that are kind of powerful in certain settings. Now I know this is cheating, but Ice Climbers should be in the bottom tier, but because there's two of them technically in the character of Ice Climbers, their tag team, they have hammers. That is pretty devastating. Inklings are kind of confusing. Would ink-based weapons actually hurt a real enemy? So because I don't want to overthink Inklings ever again, all right, so I have a hot take here. Mies aren't characters. They are avatars. Would you put the avatar from Xbox on this list? No. You can go there though. So I tried my best here because there's no way I was going to talk about every Pokemon, every Fire Emblem character, every one of these characters feats individually, because that's a lot. I know that some characters you could try and argue were higher, but 
It'll make sense when we start moving up, because these characters already are pretty damn strong. The rest are just bullshit. This tier marks the playground turning into a giant, uh, thing. Something that could pose a threat to a town single-handedly. Now we're gonna start talking about character-specific feats. Things that they've done that put them over other characters in a little bit more of a specific way. Now, these characters already up, they're no slouches. It's just as we go up, they're characters that are A, just have really ridiculous abilities or attacks that take them over the top, B, have a lot of ridiculous nonsense that they just do for no reason, and C, they're just incredibly durable based off of things that happened in their games. Never have I thought about the density of Luigi, but you know, there's a first for everything. And since we're in this tier, it's time to bring out the bullshit. These two links have the Master Sword. The Master Sword typically doubles the power of a basic sword attack, and it can shoot a beam of light at no damage. It doesn't suffer wear from use, and most important, it can harm anything aligned with evil, even if it's immortal, which is kind of a big one. The links also have a huge item catalog at their disposal, with light arrows being some of the strongest. So, naturally, they have a lot they can work with. Then there's Young Link. Well, you don't give him the Master Sword because he didn't have it in his game, but, you know, he does have this garbage. On the low end, he'd be here, and on the high end, he faced Majora with a fierce DD mask. And Majora corrupted the heavens and space. I don't really know what that means, but we're gonna say he stays here because that was one of those one time and you're done type situations. Zelda herself is tricky. This one, for example, is from A Link Between Worlds, but that game doesn't outline abilities more than telepathy and basic magic. On a wider scale, she's seen in the lore to have consistent abilities like barriers, holding down opponents, shooting light arrows, and healing. More often than not, she's support at best, and she never showcases these magical powers that she apparently has. All we know is that she is the wisdom part of the Triforce, and for some reason that matters a lot. Charizard is one of the most represented Pokemon, which means we can see just how much he can do, like slamming enemies, leaving craters, flying at high speeds, and surviving high intensity heat. While he has the same limitations as other Pokemon, his power output, as well as his versatility, would allow him to edge into this tier. So because of this, Charizard and a trainer that has Charizard probably would be in this tier. I think each of these characters in the bottom tier below it would probably have trouble taking down a Charizard on their own. And that's just due to the fact that he can fly, that he's huge, and he's got those thick thighs. He's someone to be reckoned with. But does he have a wife? Oh my god, he fucks! King K. Rool, in short, is extremely durable. Like being electrocuted and being dropped from the top of this island. As well, he can jump very high and has an assortment of weapons at his disposal. Now, these two, they're not all that large, or durable even, but the fact that they have such a catalog of weapons that do damage to demons and death... <coughs> common misconception. Simon and Richter utilize the Vampire Killer, the one thing that puts them in here. They can break down stone walls, one hit a ton of enemies, as well as damage Dracula, who is immortal. They belong in this tier, and it's only because of that bullshit vampire killer. But can they shoot tornadoes? 2D Pac-Man can do a lot on his own. He can launch tornadoes and lasers, apparently. Then in 3D, he's massively durable and has a ridiculous amount of abilities. It makes me want to cheat on my diet. Being able to eat nearly anything, killing it and turning it into a ghost, breaking through metal, leaving trails of fire. Plus, he can turn into a pinball and bounce great distances and suffer no damage. To me, it's the speed, the durability, and the abundance of random bullshit that he has that puts him in this tier. But who could rival Pac-Man? Fucking yeah. lung cancer! He's a super duper soldier and has more advanced durability and stamina than any man. And a nice ass. But seriously, the Metal Gear games basically boil down to how much bullshit they can throw at Snake until he dies. There are giant robots he defeats himself, getting shot, and then continue moving. Having nanomachines for dinner and then they take over his entire body causing seizures and stuff. Yeah, fun. Some of those guys' hearts simply stop. Snake at his core is not just a man, he's a built soldier meant to be the perfect weapon. Kept you waiting, huh? Now, I don't know Dragon Quest, but I do know they face a bunch of large beasts in parties, and the hero themselves in all of the Dragon Quest games, they have a multitude of different elemental abilities similar to some of these guys, so I'm not gonna overthink it, and I'm just gonna put him here. Okay, I messed up later and thought this little dinker was way higher, but it didn't make any sense. Lucas, at most, just has psychokinetic abilities. 
and he's displayed quite the prowess, just not to the effect of Ness, which was my mistake. Oh, and if you're wondering like, why you can't see any gameplay, it is gameplay. It's the end of Mother 3. So, uh, okay, let's just review for everybody. We've got I Fuck With Ants, A Picnic on the Playground, The Playground Under Siege, then a mecha beast demon thing attacking the entire town, and then a city level threat. But is it more dense than Luigi? The Mario characters are completely and utterly inconsistent, but even in that inconsistency, they are ridiculously strong and durable. Ah, uh -huh, look how happy they look. Now look at them resist terminal velocity without breaking a sweat. They're all here. They just are. I can't handle a world where Luigi's just as strong as Captain America. I really wanted to put them in a lower tier, but it didn't make sense. Now, the only reason that we can put these characters in this tier conclusively is because of the bullshit some characters do in this canon. Bowser, when he's not limiting his son's TikTok account, will occasionally be the size of a small island. Why not? Bowser's displayed that he can and occasionally does cause planetary disarray. I mean, he decides sometimes that he's huge and other times that he just waltzes through land masses. Other times he can float around planets and give him a good old knuckle sandwich. Clearly he's not the size of our planet, but if he wanted to cause some destruction, he can and he will. And then... He... He's more impressive than you think, alright? Donkey Kong is often fired out of barrels and completely breaks through undamaged stone structures without a problem. What about the time he actively strolled through an active tornado? Or the time he was just up to the size of a cat compared to this thing and yeeted it against a wall? The speed of his punches are enough to launch things into the atmosphere. He punched the moon out of the sky! And he lifted a ship while standing on it. <laughs> Don't you love when you craft a world with rules about the power levels of characters so when characters actually do stuff, it's interesting? Yeah, sucks. Let's talk about Ridley. He's a flying space pirate dragon that shoots lasers out of his mouth. You could even argue that he goes higher because there are some non-canon feats where he shoots a hole through a mountain. And the fact that the Samuses are on this list too kind of show that he could be even more powerful, but we'll save that for when we get to them. Mega Man is also a conundrum. You could definitely put him higher on this list, even when only considering Mega Man's 1 to 10. Do you give him all the Robot Master abilities? Energy tanks? Rush? I honestly don't know where you would start and end with this topic, because there are even comics where he does... For the sake of this topic, we'll consider he can stop time with some abilities, create black holes, has every elemental ability you can think of, tons of projectile, movement-based powers, flying abilities, and so on. A lot of this is based off of gameplay conveniences because each game they give him new abilities, so it's hard to say how you'd rate him. I'm just gonna put him here for brevity. And finally, closing out this part of the list. Am I not top tier? I ate milk and cookies where the cookie was Hyrule and water was the milk. Yeah, I should have seen that coming. Well, Gandorf's a little bit problematic because he's... He can only be damaged by, uh... Oh. And the... Ah. Which begs the question... If Palutena blessed some light arrows of pits, would that also work to the same effect? Would the vampire killer hurt him because it kills Dracula and literally death? So, it's a little bit tricky to say what will happen in different canons, so to be safe, I'm just going to... Okay, oh, come on! I'm speaking for the people. We've now approached the reality that the jungle gym has transformed into a planet-wide threat. So who could beat the king of evil? I'll explain it. May be surprising to some of you that Samus comes in very high on this list. She has a breadth of abilities that does damage to some insane foes. Plus her durability, she can survive boiling hot magma. But planetary level threat. Well, in Metroid Prime Echoes, allegedly, there's this nifty little planet that's kept alive due to light energy, or whatever. This Rick takes the power that powers their planet, and Samus destroys them. She just gave a planet a knuckle sandwich. But me, me and Zack Attack are on the same page here. Which doesn't even go into her misadventures with Dark Samus. So there isn't actually a person in there, sorry to ruin it for you. That's because Dark Samus takes the form of Samus's Varius suit. The real embodiment of Dark Samus is this element called Phazon. Phazon can literally take control of a non-living or living material. And it seeks to grow and want more. It's been stated that this alone, if unhandled, could wipe out the entire universe like a virus. 
and in the game, she amasses an army of space pirates just from this ability. So while it's a bit unorthodox, planetary destruction is not out of its ability. And the Icarus Kids! They're a little bit hard to talk about because Politana grants Pit all of his abilities and Dark Pit is a clone of Pit. So unless you wanted to have a completely default Pit, he'd be much lower. But because I want to consider how he'd actually fight, he'd probably be up here because he's got some bullshit. By default, he can fly through the air at astonishing speeds, dodge lasers, and goes into space. God, and he has so many types of attacks. The three sacred treasures are also worth throwing in. They give him unlimited flight and the light arrows, which are like links where they can immediately kill an opponent on impact. He also can't read. I never learned how to read. <laughs> Dark Pit doesn't need to be talked about because he is entirely a copy of Pit. What is with these 1986 Nintendo protagonists? And the last Pokemon I considered, Mewtwo. What a load of sh- Mewtwo surprised me with all of the stuff he could do. Let's, let's take a look. He can survive explosions while being inside them. He has the ability to mind control and wipe the memory of other creatures and use them to his advantage. He has controlling hurricane, barriers that block attacks, flying at high speed, shadow balls, and if we want to consider Shadow Mewtwo and this attack... <laughs> I don't think we should. Even without this non-canon form, Mewtwo cheats at everything and gets away with it. Now, the way I consider Pokemon is if one Pokemon can do it, all of them have the potential to do it. So, um, Mewtwo, uh, canon or non-canon, he actually just breaks everything and there's nothing you can do about it. As you can see, as we get higher, it's a lot of characters that have some really strong attacks, strong abilities, insanely cool powers, and Meta Knight. I will explain in a bit. And welcome to the segment, Dinner in a Movie with a God. Are you an ambiguously aged preteen? Have you got spiky hair? Have you messed around with a god one summer? Oh, <laughs> apparently it's pretty common. Ike. The Ragnal is a sword blessed by the goddess of chaos and used to defeat the goddess of order. He's clearly the best out of all of these swordsmen. And he beat a god. Cloud fought Sephiroth and Genova and, um, uh, he rides a motorcycle. Shulk became a god. <laughs> Maybe. I mean, before that, he has the ability to see the future of when he's gonna be attacked or his party's gonna be attacked. And he has a ton of nifty Monado abilities. And I didn't play it, but apparently he resets his entire world. He fights in his underwear. And Ness, he, uh, he beat Gygus. What is Gygus? God is a ambiguous term. Uh, all of them have faced one at some point, or at least threats that could be perceived as universe ending. But does that mean they just do that whenever they feel like it? I don't know. This tier is sort of a consolation prize for these characters that otherwise would be in D tier, but because they happen to do this thing and at the end of their games they're really, really powerful, we have to sort of respect that. If you couldn't tell, this tier list gets dumber by the tier. And now, we are reaching our final. Five. The jungle gym has become one with the universe and has left the corporeal realm. The final tier before S tier is A. This is sort of a honorary tier for characters that have godly statuses but don't do much. Yes, it's Politana and Rosalina. Yeah! Politana and Rosalina are so ambiguous. They are listed as goddesses, but what does that mean? Why? Um, they're goddesses. How come? They're goddesses. Well, they can't be so high, but they're goddesses. Is it that everyone else can't fight them because they're in a realm of their own? Are they so powerful, but just nonchalant about their abilities because they don't want to interfere? The fact is we don't see them do a lot. Politana actually created all of Pit's weapons and abilities, so she's the reason he can do everything he can do. And then Rosalina at the end of Galaxy, um, deletes the effects of a black hole consuming the entire universe, and everything's set back to normal, and she's a giant too. <laughs> right? So, we have characters that face a god once and then one conveniently. We have actual goddesses, so who's higher than that? Only characters that beat gods like it's shoveling the driveway. The final three characters, the ones that dominate the S tier, patty cake with gods every week. Boom! Yeah. All right!
I am. Uh, this is dumb. It is dumb. There is no reason they're this strong. They just are. Kirby and Sonic, they're ridiculous. Bayonetta is just near indestructible. She actually has some interesting stuff you can look at, though. So, to put it in perspective, the Goombas of Bayonetta's universe are categorized as angels. And she wipes them out completely calmly while doing sexy poses. She casually just rides debris in a hurricane and fights an enemy all at the same time. She can use her abilities to destroy skyscrapers. Oh, and the whole summoning demons thing that are huge and probably city ending. And if you had any more doubts, she faces these angels at multiple tiers. We talked about the Goombas, but there's two higher ones, with the highest being Jubilees, who at full power could recreate the entire universe. So her being overpowered in Smash Bros. for Wii U, it, it kind of makes a little bit of sense, doesn't it? All right, we'll talk about Sonic, all right? Sonic to a lot of people is often thrown in lower tiers and truthfully, a lot of the feats are debatable. If I were to go into the spanning lore to Sonic and the comics and the games, it would take forever. So I like to think big picture. He can achieve speeds of... Actually, what even is it now? I mean, first it's the speed of sound and then in booklets and inaccurate games, they measure his estimates to be like 2,500 miles per hour with a big F you to Canada, yeah. And it's also worth noting that even if this is a minimum, he can achieve top speed instantly. For his body to achieve that sort of acceleration and not even get scathed, it, it's incredible. We also see this durability of his when he's ping-ponging around buildings, breaking through metallic, strong government robots. And you know, occasionally he goes faster than the speed of light, woohoo. And this is all even before the Chaos Emeralds, by the way. If Sonic actually cared, he could probably be a planetary and universal threat, but he just loves those chili dogs too much. I just put him up here because he's cool. So I didn't talk about King DDD or Meta Knight, and it's not because there is like a lot to say about them, it's just that Kirby is just utter horseshit. But even if he is horseshit, he's up here. Lowballing, he's up here, okay? This isn't me memeing, this is dead ass for all of you uninitiated. Kirby and his series is absolutely ridiculous. You think it's about a cute little character platforming, it's actually about him defeating gods and then going to sleep. Let's list the characters he's defeated and what they've done. King Dedede, often cited as the strongest warrior on his planet, is durable enough to survive a ton of stuff. Like, seriously, they just make him take a lot of punishment willy-nilly. Meta Knight, who's cited as the strongest warrior in the galaxy, can achieve speeds faster than light. Kirby also just destroys his halberd. Yeah, that's okay. Mark's got the sun and moon to fight, then he took over a planet, and then he died, and then he came back. Magalore, he conquered a universe, and Kirby defeated him. He stays he'll take over the universe, and then upon getting bopped, his dimension, where he's from, collapses. Uh, because of this guy. There are other ones too. Kirby beats Drasia, who decided to transform matter in the universe to paint. You could go on and on about Kirby. Kirby ultimately gets the title of Patty Cake Champion. Not only beating gods, but every single powerful character on this tier list. Looking at it now, and maybe you could come up with some counterpoints, but I think in a general sense, this kind of dictates all of the characters and their crazy, nonsensical abilities and how they'd stack up to one another. But there's one more character we didn't consider. Where does Mr. Game & Watch go? In his games, he, he takes the role of, you know, the everyday worker, s stacking boxes, <laughs> covering manholes. But if he were to come in reality, it's been shown that he has infinitely small width. And if that were the case, he would be infinitely small. He would create a black hole. The universe would be consumed. Oh, I guess he really isn't that strong. I guess he's going right down with Olimar. Ah. Thank you everybody for watching. I hope you had a fun time for us dictating the strength of all of these Smash characters. And if you think there is a problem, guess what? I do not care. I do not want to do this again. Do you know how many series I had to research for this trash? And then Kirby just decides to suck it all up! Yep. Everything is fucked. Is what I'm reading this month thanks to Audible. Pitt may not be able to read, but with Audible, he could put on Greek Mythology's Mega Collection. For Audible, all you need is your smartphone or tablet to get access to thousands of audiobooks or podcasts. Audible lets you download them offline so you can listen to them anytime, anywhere. 
which is a huge kicker for commutes where you otherwise can't read. <laughs> Ask Pit when he's flying around. Okay, I'm, I'm done with that one. <laughs> However, I sit at my desk all day editing for hours daily, and I have the book Everything is Fucked as paperback, but I just couldn't get through it. I couldn't find the time, but while my brain melts away from moving boxes on my screen for editing, I can listen to the audiobook, and I can still get the same existential dread I would. Now, I'm halfway through this one, but Mark Manson's The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck is also wonderful. If you find yourself in need of some harsh words helping you get through some existential dread, this is the good stuff. Visit audible.com slash relaxalax or text relaxalax to 500-500 to get 30 days free with any audiobook and two Audible originals. That is audible.com slash relaxalax or text relaxalax to 500-500. I know you're like me. You've seen Audible and videos for years and you're like, I don't know, maybe I'll try it. And I've tried it and I honestly say it's worth the plunge. So give it a try. Maybe you'll find something you like and find a use for you otherwise may not have thought you had. And thank you to Audible for giving me the opportunity to be sponsored in this video. It was painful to get through, but utilizing sponsors like this make it so the additional time I spend on videos can be counterbalanced, I guess. But also, thank you to many of you. This video is very hard, and I'm so, so worried that, um, like, it's gonna get flamed because, the, you know, I didn't cover everything as much as I maybe could have, but there's just so much to cover, and I really just tried to boil down each character's feats into, like, small sections, and trust me, like, I had some more, but I felt like I had to just get to the core of it and move on, otherwise this would have been, like, 15 minutes. So, I really hope you enjoyed it. I, I really tried my best. If we want to revisit this topic and <laughs> reassess this list, I still have the tier list up, so I'm not moving it, uh, and we could probably do that, I don't know. But if you enjoyed it, please let me know. Your feedback is always welcome. Patrons, thank you so much for your support, supporting the videos and especially the Know Your Moves series. Uh, I say it every time, but the reason I can keep those series afloat and hire an editor is because of you guys. So take it easy, everybody. This has been Alex, and I will see you on the flip side.